When my daughter was nine years old, she was playing on an aerial yoga swing. It's one of those meters and meters of long silk fabric that's suspended from, you know, really high ceilings. And she was doing backflips from this aerial yoga swing. On her last attempt, my daughter, nine years old, she let go of the swing with her hands by accident, and her head came crashing down to the ground. And with such a brutal force on the hardwood floors. Now, at the time when she fell, her head would have been about eight feet off the ground. So if any of you have ever suffered from a concussion, you know how debilitating a concussion can be. They're painful. Um, often, they prevent you from living your life, even to the fullest. So my daughter, she couldn't go to school. She couldn't read. She couldn't watch TV to distract herself from the pain. And for me as a mother, watching her daughter go through this, it was also excruciating for me. Over the course of 30 days, I took my daughter to see several different types of specialists and healthcare practitioners. We saw medical doctors, we saw eye doctors, we saw concussion specialists, took her to physio, acupuncture, cranial sacral. I did voodoo stuff with her. I did anything to try and get her healthy. And at best, her pain would come down to about a seven out of 10, but usually within half an hour of her receiving a treatment, the pain would come back up to a 15 out of 10. So after 30 days, I said, enough is enough, and I took her to the emergency room, and I said, you have to check her out. Something has to be wrong with her. Now, I've been working for the last 10 years with people who suffer from cancer and chronic disease, and I teach them a metabolic nutritional therapy that actually reverses their illnesses. So give me someone who has type 2 diabetes, MS, any type of autoimmune disorder, infertility, migraines, Crohn's, irritable bowel. I mean, the list is long. I've worked with hundreds of clients, and I know how to use food as medicine. But when it came to concussions, concussions are an acute condition, right? It happened from an injury, similar to a car accident. And I didn't think I knew anything about concussions. I had done a lot of research in neuroscience literature. And, but really, I didn't know what to do to help her. But the sad thing was, is that none of the doctors and other healthcare practitioners could help her either. We know how to diagnose concussions, but we do not know how to treat them. So often, people are left on their own to try and figure it out. And often, they resort to antidepressants, sleep medications, and other types of opioids that really they become addicted to, and this is the last thing I wanted for my daughter. So the emergency doctor that morning, 8.30 in the morning in Whistler, he said, you know, you might have to prepare yourself that your daughter's going to have to be home for school for a year before she might even feel better. And I couldn't believe it. The wait-and-see approach, the do-nothing approach, this was not good enough for my daughter and wasn't good enough for me. So then that's when I decided to apply everything I knew about working with cancer and chronic disease and apply it to my daughter that day. So I left the emergency room, we walked over to the physio clinic, and I demanded that the physiotherapist massage her intensely all the way through her body, not just her shoulders, not just her neck, not just her head. After that, we were fortunate that there was an acupuncturist in the same clinic, and I said, okay, I want you to follow up this treatment with acupuncture therapy to increase blood flow, circulation, anything to help my daughter. After that, we walked over to the optometrist, and fortunately, being in Whistler, everything is just a five-minute walk away. So we were lucky, a bit different if you were in Vancouver or another big city. So I went to the optometrist and I said, you know, tell me anything you know about how to heal the brain from an eye perspective. And she thought, I'm sure she thought I was crazy. And she said, but you know what, there is something you can do. Go get a pair of rose-colored glasses. Okay, now this isn't to, you know, be hopeful. But literally, go get a pair of rose-colored glasses and tape off the periphery of the glasses so that there's less stimulation coming into the eyes to give the eyes a break, and then to ultimately give the brain a break. So that's what I did. And what was incredible is her pain by this point had dropped down to about a seven out of 10. So then after this, we were fortunate to have a therapy float tank company in Whistler. So I took her over to West Coast Float. And if any of you don't know what that is, they're basically sensory depriv deprivation pods, and they're full of magnesium. So from a nutrition perspective, I knew that magnesium is absolutely critical for brain health, for cellular regeneration, for total body repair. So my daughter, nine years old, she agreed to undress, slip into the float tank, and she was in there for 90 minutes, absorbing magnesium transdermally through her skin, the best way to take most drugs and nutrients. So after that, her headache had come down to a five out of 10, and I thought, incredible. We have some success, and again, it wasn't good enough for me. So then after that, I brought my daughter home, 
and I did what I did best, nutrition, and I pumped her body full of every type of nutrient in high, high dose that I can think of, and that was her lunch. Now, she was tired from all of these treatments in just one morning. So after that, I had her lay down, and then I applied what I call the Temple Grandin technique. Now, if you don't know who Temple Grandin is, she's an incredible woman who has autism, and I applied compression therapy. So a lot of you probably know what compression therapy is if you've ever had surgery or an injury where you wear compression stocking. So what I did is I applied compression therapy to her entire system in an effort to compress and promote healing and circulation and ultimately to give her brain a break from all of the incoming noise that we suffer from every single day. Now, my daughter slept for two and a half hours, the longest nap she had taken since she was three years old. And when she woke up, her headache was at a one out of 10. Wow is right, but it still wasn't good enough for me. So I fed her again another nutritious, highly rich in omega-3s meal, and I took her to the chiropractor. And so at the chiropractor, I said, listen, my daughter had a concussion, and I'm trying to heal her, and I'm trying to do it in a day. So I need you to go through her entire... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd had enough. My poor baby was in pain. So... I said, you need to adjust her body and make sure her entire skeletal system is in full alignment from head to toe. So I said, I'll pay you as much as you want, just do it, and she did. And after that, her pain was still a one out of 10, but she had a sparkle in her eye for the first time in a month. So I took her home and again, fed her another nutritious brain meal and put her to bed, and for the first time in a month, she slept peacefully all night. And when she woke up the next morning, her pain was a zero out of 10, and the first thing she said is that she was ready to go back to school. And since that day, she hasn't missed a single day of school because of her concussion at all. The reason why I think I was able to do that for my daughter is because I have this truly innate belief that the body is not a sum of independent parts, but is a complete magical whole. It's a self-healing organism that if we just enable the body to heal itself, it will, because that is how our body is designed. The other thing is that we need an entire integrated healthcare system if we are truly going to tackle the health issues that we are faced with. Now, Right now, one in two Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. Anybody here shocked by that statistic? One in two Canadians. One in four are living in a, with a chronic degenerative disease. This is an epidemic, and it's not being handled well within our current medical system. Yes, if you are in a car accident, Yes, I bow down to those doctors, the team of medical practitioners who are there waiting in the emergency room to treat you. But again, that's a whole integrated healthcare team that waits for you in acute situations. But we don't have that when it comes to chronic degenerative disease. Now, does anyone know what this number is? 7.5. That's the number of minutes that GPs are given to work with you, to treat you, to diagnose you, to prescribe you. 7.5 minutes. And that is not enough. Even with socialized medicine, 7.5 minutes is a disgrace because it's not enough time for a doctor to look into the magic crystal ball and figure out what is truly wrong with you. Now, with all the work that I've been doing with my clients, they come to me misdiagnosed often, they come to me on the wrong medications, they come to me in severe chronic pain, and they've been living that way even after undergoing surgery, multiple surgeries after surgery after surgery. And I know many of you can relate to that, okay? Our medical system is not working when it comes to chronic degenerative disease, and that's the cold, hard truth. So, I have a proposition, and it's to rethink what it's like to go to the medical doctor. And instead of having a doctor say, hmm, what's the right surgery or pill for this illness? Because that's what they are taught in medical school. They are taught to diagnose and prescribe, and that is it. So when it comes to our healthcare system, we need to reimagine med the medical education system. 
This is one of the courses, or programs even, that I would require of all medical students, and it would be called Food is Better, Better Medicine Than Drugs. I met a fantastic doctor from Ireland, and he said when he was in medical school, he was actually required to read a book with the same title. And I thought, that's incredible, but just a book? There should actually be a program. Because you see, I'm not a medical doctor, and in fact, the orthomolecular nutritional therapy that I teach my clients that reverses infertility, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, gets people off medication, and gets them to cancel their scheduled surgeries, it's done through nutrition. And doctors, we know, when they graduate from medical school, on average, they receive about six to 12 hours, only at some universities, of nutritional training. And in most universities, medical colleges, they don't even teach nutrition at all. So when I have my clients, who are doctor's patients, and they actually heal, their doctors go, how is that possible? How did it work? Well, it couldn't have had anything to do with your diet. And in fact, it had everything to do with the changes it made to their diet and their lifestyle. The second course that I would teach is called The Power of the Human Mind. Now, did you know that there was a study released in 2014 that showed that in 74, that, that sham surgeries were effective in 74% of trials? And sham surgeries are pretend surgeries. So what happens is you, could, you, you might be scheduled to have a surgery, and what, you'll go into the emergency room, the surgical room, and then the doctors there will pretend to do the surgery. They communicate with each other, they pass instruments back and forth, they actually cut you open and close you up, but without doing anything. And it's been proven that the body heals itself just from thinking that it underwent surgery. And the same thing for placebo trials. Placebo trials are almost as effective, if not more effective, than most of the drugs out there. And a placebo is just a sugar pill. But what's even more fascinating is that even when doctors tell their patients and researchers tell the control groups that they are given a placebo and that they're going to be given, undergo a sham surgery, they still heal, which is truly remarkable. We don't know anything about the human mind. We think we do science and neuroplasticity is still only at the forefront of research right now. The mind is incredibly powerful, and doctors need to learn this in medical school, and it should not just be isolated to the neuroscientists. The third course that I would teach is called Anything But Meds, but I'm open to other titles as well. Perhaps it's Pharmaceuticals and Surgery, Only as a Last Resort, or Don't Pay Me Until I Get You Healthy. Any one of those courses are the type of course that doctors need to take, not just a course, but an entire program. Because there is not a single pharmaceutical drug out there that doesn't have debilitating side effects. Even death are associated with most of these drugs. Did you know that the third leading cause of death in North America is medical error? From misdiagnosis, interaction of drugs, operating on the wrong arm, the wrong organ, the wrong person? So we definitely need a change within our medical system. Now, this is not a far-fetched fantasy. This is something that is attainable right now, but we need to demand it as patients, and we need to demand it as citizens. We also need to advocate for ourselves. Do the research, do the learning, go to great lengths to do anything that you can to keep yourself off meds, to keep your organs intact, because your body needs a healthy, vibrant body if it's truly going to heal. Thank you. Thank you.